In this tutorial, you learn how to create flat style illustration with grain texture. You learn unique professional techniques of adding color and textures in Adobe Illustrator, and also will learn the basics of sketch drawing, composition, and how to quickly trace a sketch with the pen tool and the pencil tool. You can download my sketch, color palette, and reference to immediately practice all that I'll show you today. By the end of this tutorial, you'll know different combinations to apply textures with the freeform gradient, how to professionally use the basic tools, and how to draw your own sketches. You are watching TNT tutorials? Let's move on! Once you have an idea for an illustration, you should go straight to the composition. To choose the composition, you need to make small drawings where you put everything you want to see. Try to avoid the center. Let all objects be placed right around it. The horizon line should not be right in the middle either. Move it up or down. Don't be afraid to try out ideas that come into your head while drawing. Be sure to draw what inspiration advises you. You may decide to change something completely and it will make the illustration much better. If not, you always have the option of erasing the drawing or just starting over. The main thing is not to press a pencil, and then erasing lines will be very easy. Each object should complement the illustration and not be confusing. Composition is the basis of everything. If the composition is good, you can be sure that everything will work out. Look for the idea you like the best. Once you've made up your mind, start the sketch. Look for references for anything you want to draw. For example, look at what the hat looks like when it's tilted, how people hold the guitar, and what the girl's back looks like. Draw details when the whole base is ready. The role of details is to add life and enhance the mood you want to convey. As you can see, the sketch is almost done. You can download it and follow this tutorial along with me. Select Web, enter 2000 in both windows, Leave 72 here. I will explain this moment later in this tutorial. And after this, click on Create. You can download Sketch by the link in the video description. Then click on File, Place, and find path to download the Sketch. Click in top left corner to place Sketch ideally. Rename this layer to Sketch and lock this layer. After this, create a new layer to continue. For those who are new to Adobe Illustrator, hold Alt or Option key and use Scroll to zoom in and out. You can also press Z to use the Zoom tool, click to zoom in, and hold Alt or Option key and click to zoom out. Also, you can do the same, but simply hold left mouse button and drag mouse to the left or to the right. Hold Space to navigate through the workspace, hold left mouse button also. Now let me show you basic and advanced pen tool hints. Press P to use the pen tool. Select Fill color icon and click on None. Click on Properties. Here you can change stroke width anytime. Click on Stroke and select Round Cap and Round Join. When you have many lines, you can press Ctrl or Command plus A to select them and change stroke width for all. Today I'll show you my favorite tracing and coloring method. It's very easy, but you should follow all steps to avoid any issues. There's three crucial steps. First, trace with overlapping. All lines should overlap a bit. Sometimes it won't be handy to create overlapping lines, so you should create a small tails. To do this, stop on another line, then hold Alt or Option key, Drag the handle like this to make a sharp corner and click to create a small tail. Second crucial step is correct deleting of all these unneeded lines. You should use only Pathfinder for that. It's much faster than clicking on each line with the Shape Builder tool and I guarantee that you won't have any issues. In the same time, you'll have many issues with the Shape Builder tool if you'll ignore my method. Third step is coloring. We'll use Divide from Pathfinder. First of all, it's fast. And second, it will allow you to easily experiment with color combinations. Let's return to tracing for now. You can click to create lines. Press A for the Direct Selection tool. Drag these dots. 
and round corners. You can also select one point only. When you have a straight line, you can press P for the pen tool, hold Alt or Option key, and bend this line. You can create a line roughly, then press A for the direct selection tool and edit this line. Move points and play with handles. To quickly deselect path, hold Ctrl or Command and click somewhere. I recommend you to watch how I use the pen tool tips in different cases to be confident when you'll do this on your own. I recommend you to add the Pencil tool to your tracing workflow also. Press N to use the Pencil tool and press Enter. I use this panel very often to move this slider. I move it here when I need sharp corners and here when I need smooth lines. Check these settings also. I work with these settings. Don't forget about the pen tool. You can use them both. The pencil tool will allow you to easily create wavy lines, which will look more live. After you'll finish, create a rectangle to create a frame according to sketch. This step is very important. Press M to use the rectangle tool, hold left mouse button and simply drag it from this corner to this. Now it's time for a second crucial step. Press Ctrl or Command plus A to select all. Click on Properties. In Pathfinder click on More options and select Outline. Everything will disappear and that's ok. Press V for selection tool and drag a selection to pick lines again. In properties panel apply stroke width. Zoom in and use the selection tool to select lines and delete them. Or press Q on your keyboard to use the lasso tool. Select final points and press delete twice. You should not select a point by creating a circle selection. It's enough to drag like this. I also recommend you to press Ctrl or Command plus X to delete lines. Press it twice also because you'll first delete the final point and then you'll need to delete first point. Your left hand will lay on keyboard relaxed if you'll press Ctrl or Command plus X instead of reaching to delete button each time. Just use this shortcut and press Q to pick the lasso tool again. Also hold space and move from one area to another. After you'll delete all unneeded lines, create a new layer 
and rename it to lines. Press Ctrl or Command plus C to make a copy, select Lines layer in the Layers panel, and press Ctrl or Command plus F to place copied lines to this layer. Click here to lock Lines layer. It's time for a third crucial step. Let's make Lines layer invisible for now. Select this layer and press M to use the Rectangle tool. Draw a huge rectangle to cover all lines. After this, press Ctrl or Command plus left brackets to bring this rectangle to the bottom. Press Ctrl or Command plus A to select all. Click on Properties. In Pathfinder, click on More Options and select Divide. Press V for the Selection tool. Select this rectangle. Right-click on it and select Ungroup. Now let's make Lines layer visible to see all areas. Select needed shape using the Selection tool. Press I for Eyedropper tool and apply needed color. You can select a few shapes at once, hold Shift and pick needed shapes, then apply color. When you know that you'll have the same color for some objects, you can group them by pressing Ctrl or Command plus G and then apply color. This will allow you to easily try different colors later. You'll select a few objects with one click and simply adjust color. After you'll apply all colors, make Lines layer invisible. Now we are ready to add noise textures. Pay attention to my instruction and you'll have great results. Press V for the selection tool and select Shape. Press Ctrl or Command plus C to make a copy and then Ctrl or Command plus F. With copied layer selected, pick different color. You can double-click on the Fill color icon to select color. You'll be able to change color anytime, so feel free to experiment. Click on Window and select Transparency. Drag this window here. Click on Make Mask, then click on Clip, select this white window, press M for Rectangle tool and create a huge rectangle. Open Gradient panel and drag it here. Now we have two needed panels active and easy to use. Select Freeform Gradient. In Freeform Gradient you have two modes – Points and Lines. With Points mode active, hold Shift, select these three points and delete them. You can press Delete on your keyboard. Double-click on this point and pick white color. Now you can create a few white points more. Select Lines mode and connect these points. To move points and edit them after you connected them, it's better to select Points mode again. Create another point, double-click on it and pick black color. You can create a few black points also and connect them if you want. To add noise texture, click on Effect, Texture, Grain. In this window, I will use Stippled. Play with these values and click OK. Let me show you what happens next. After you'll finish, press V for the Selection tool and select this window. By clicking on this window, you're coming back to usual mode and you can work with all layers and apply textures. If you've decided to change texture, select Needed Object, click on this window to enter Opacity Mask mode, press V for the Selection tool and select a rectangle with gradient.
you can also click on properties, click on applied effect and change texture values. Now I'll show you how to use this method in a few different cases. Basically we need to make a copy, change a color for a copy, apply opacity mask, enter opacity mask mode, create a rectangle there and apply freeform gradient to this rectangle. Then move points, unite them with lines or leave them as they are, try different positions and enjoy the process. You can also change texture's resolution anytime. To do this, click on Effect and select Document Raster Effect Settings. Play with these values. Try low values and high values. Textures can look very differently. If you learned something new from this tutorial, drop a comment below. Let me know if everything was clear enough for you and what you liked about this video. If you enjoyed this tutorial, support this channel by clicking on subscribe and what's most important by clicking on the bell icon to get notifications about newest tutorials from TNT. I'd also appreciate if you'll click thumbs up and will share this video. This was TNT Tutorials, see you in next videos!